Uh, welcome. This is the regular town council meeting for Wednesday, February 21st, 2008. Uh, I'll call the meeting to order and ask for the to rise. Please join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> and I'll ask the clerk for roll call, please. Councilor Foley? Here. Councilor Katarina? Here. Councilor Hayes? Here. And Vice Chair Chiazzo? Here. Uh, next thing on the agenda is order number 18-012, act on the request for an executive session pursuant to Title I on the MRSA Chapter 405, Subsection 6, Subsection C, regarding a personal matter relating to the town manager's evaluation. Um, so at the manager's request and the fact that we're, uh, we don't have a full council tonight, I will recognize Councilor Hayes for a motion. Yes, I'd like to make a motion that we table this until the meeting on 3-1. Okay. Second. Second. Okay. All in favor? And that's unanimous. Thank you. Uh, general public comments. Does anybody wish to make any comments to the council on matters that are not on the agenda? Okay. Seeing none, we'll close the public hearing. Uh, minutes from February 8th, 2018. I entertain a motion. Motion to approve. Second. Okay. Uh, all in favor? That's unanimous. Slow down. <laughs> uh, so, um, adjustments to the agenda. We're 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 we're, we're uh, because of the delay in the uh, or the, the the lack of a um, executive session. We're we're going to hold the public hearings at seven o'clock because of the posting. So we're going to change the order up a little bit. Um, we're going to go and take old business and new business first. Uh, if that gets us through to 7 o'clock, then we can immediately go into the public hearings. If we end up a little bit short of time, we'll take a recess and reconvene at, at 7 o'clock to give everybody the opportunity to speak who wanted to speak on the public hearings. So uh, having said that, we'll go uh, first. Oh, sorry. Oh, items to be signed. Thank you. See, I'm already out of order. Uh, items to be signed are the treasurer's warrants, and I have taken care of those. And now we will move into old business. Uh, order number 18-008 uh, is a second reading on the request from the town manager to expend $77,950 from the undesignated fund balance for the commercial industrial revaluation. Um, this is uh, being introduced by Tom, the, the town manager, but uh, I think, again, as in light of the fact that we're, uh, there's four of us, and I know the other three counselors certainly wanted to have input as well, and I think it's important for us to all have the say, so I will recognize Councillor Katarina. Uh, yes, I, I move to table this also to uh, March 1st. Uh, as Councillor Cayazzo indicated, I think that we need to have uh, all counselors here. So. Okay. So Second. All right. Uh, all in favor? And that's unanimous. Okay. Uh, uh, order number 18-014. Act on the request to approve the names posted to the various committee boards on Wednesday, February 8, 2018, as recommended by the Appointments Negotiations Committee. And I suppose if we needed time, we could read all of them, because there's quite a few of them. Uh, but I am... Uh, I don't think there's any other introductions needed. I'll entertain a motion. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor? And that's unanimous. Boy, we're going to have a long recess. Just if we could use the opportunity for those in attendance and mm -hmm. at home. Uh, there are always vacancies on other committees. I yes. don't know exactly what they are, but uh, we have a listing of those opportunities on the website and a short application that we ask you to fill out and be pleased to consider that. I think we do have a list of open uh, uh, open seats and what's available, for sure. Okay, moving on to new business. Uh, order <coughs> number 18-15, uh, act on the annual seasonal road posting for weights restrictions, if necessary, from March 5th to May 7th. And that's from Public Works, but I assume Tom yes, will introduce that. Yes, I, I think today's temperature is a uh, harbinger of what's to come. Uh, this is an annual ritual um, for us in Maine. 
Uh, this allows the Public Works Department to post certain roads, though this authorization is granted, uh, they only do it when necessary. And even with that, they make accommodations for construction. Uh, very often they're able to run on those roads early in the morning while frost is still in the ground. So uh, we look for your blessing so we can take care of our infrastructure. Uh, and I also neglected to do public comment on the other ones, uh, on the other items. Can they be reopened if necessary? I don't think it does. It, no. Okay. All right. You're good. All right. <laughs> Just checking. We, we have a, a, a very live and vivacious audience tonight. Um, so then I will entertain public comment if anybody wants to speak on this matter. Seeing none, we'll close the public hearing. Um, and we have so request for a motion. Second. Okay. Uh, any discussion or comment? Um. The only thing is, when I saw this, I thought, oh, yay, spring's right around the corner. So I was very happy to see the road post. <laughs> Anything else? No? Okay. Uh, all in favor? Thank it's you. unanimous. Four to nothing. Uh, order number 18-16. Uh, act on the following request pursuant to Title F, uh, 23 MRSA Section 3025 and the requirements of Section 4 of the Scarborough Street Acceptance Ordinance, the following streets, Trillium Way, located in the Trillium Subdivision off Ashwamp Road, and Memory Lane Extension, located in the Thurberge Subdivision of Two Rod Road. And Tom, if you want to... Yes, uh, the town engineer, I, I think she's probably downstairs waiting for 7 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> uh, as always, she's put together, I think, a complete uh, memorandum for you. Essentially, uh, it's her uh, job to make sure, inspect during construction and after construction, that the roads are constructed to our standards. In this case, uh, both these uh, sections of roadway are. And so uh, this action, uh, I should say, through the planning board process, the uh, applicant is indicated their intent of having these public roads and have built them to our standards. Uh, it does require council to formally accept them for them to become public roads. Mm -hmm. uh, with that become, comes uh, all the normal uh, winter and summer maintenance uh, and trash collection as well. So it's uh, something that the residents uh, look very much forward to. Okay. Um, public comment? Anybody wishing to speak from the public on this matter? Seeing none, we'll close the public hearing, uh, and I will entertain a motion. So moved. Second. Um, discussion? Okay. Uh, I guess, oh, sorry. Yeah, Councillor Hayes. No, I was just clearing my throat. <laughs> wow. Okay, so we don't get the record for the shortest meeting, but yeah. we're going to have a long time. Um, I will just ask, I did notice that there were... Um, the, 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 the roads were, I don't want to say dead-ended, but there wasn't like a turnaround space or something on them. And I know in the past we might have had some challenges with, um, with, with either school bus access or I know they're, they're able to fit emergency vehicles down through it, uh, but I'm not sure if there is a, a requirement. There is. And in, in both cases, there is a so-called hammerhead yeah. provided at the end of Trillium. Okay. And they've, they've also constructed the one at the end of Memory Lane as well. Okay. Um, we had hoped that Memory Lane would have connected through into Council Rowan's development, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, but they, they, they couldn't make that happen, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. But uh, they've been properly constructed in that regard. Okay. All right. Council Kettering? Yeah, I, I just wanted to say that usually they have hammerheads or whatever mm -hmm. uh, at the end of those roads uh, for fire engines also. And I feel mm -hmm. very um, confident that if the town engineer says they're ready to go, then they're ready to go. So. Mm -hmm. She, she scrutinized these things. She's, uh, yeah. Yes, uh, they're not in front of you unless they're ready. Yep. Okay. Any other comment? Okay. Uh, seeing none, uh, we'll go to vote. All in favor? Thank you. And that's unanimous. There she is. Right so, um, <laughs> she can tell we know here. <laughs> Don't Com ask, Will. Councillor yeah. Rowan has, has, has now joined us. Ooh. Welcome. Someone's phone. My phone. Yeah. How are you? Good. You're all set. Um. So we're. So we. Uh, I'll for the benefit of council.
Uh, so, uh, for Councilor Rowan's benefit, I'll just reiterate: um, we're we're in a, a bit of a, a different scheduling situation. We've, we've tabled the um, executive session, and we've tabled the uh, evaluation piece, and we're taking um, basically all the new business now because public hearing is scheduled for seven, so we can't conduct a public hearing until seven. So, um, we're we're through those uh, items, and we're on to item eight. Uh, non-action items there are none uh, item 9 standing and special committee reports and liaison reports so uh, uh, Councillor Rowan's going to get settled I guess I'll start with Councillor Hayes <laughs> um, I guess I'll start with we um, the Finance Committee did meet last night and we had a good meeting at least in my opinion we had a great meeting um, we did we've been working on the debt policy and consolidating some of the debt policy and some other policies for a while now and actually moved through it last night and I think we have a tentative document that we will be bringing forward to the council mm -hmm. um, we did review the financial statements through 1231 there are no surprises we are tracking as 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 predicted so there's no surprises we're in good shape um, we talked a little bit about the budget review process and what we were going to do and really kind of left it we're going to schedule all the departments as we always have done but i think we're trying to abbreviate that i think it's been getting better and better and easier to understand some of the things so i think we may not talk to all the departments if the budgets are, are pretty straightforward we did talk about and i don't think i'm talking out of turn tom i think is at least starting with sort of a target of about a two percent overall sort mm -hmm. of increase which that's on the town side yeah on the town side yeah <laughs> on the town side yeah um we also talked a little bit about recently there were some bond rating reviews that were conducted um we came out of that in good shape we also tom shared with us some updates about some of the bonds we actually have um you know went to market on it came back a little higher than we wanted in interest rates but certainly within within the quarters and so with that, I think we're in good shape. We are having on the 26th at 6 p.m. that we're having a joint finance committee meeting um, with the Board of Education where we will continue starting to talk a little bit about what we see as budget drivers this year and some other aspects around meetings and how we're going to conduct it and how we're going to reach the public and that type of thing. So I think that's most of the stuff from the finance committee meeting. Mm -hmm. Um, the Coastal Harbor and Shellfish Commission also has, has met the Coastal Harbor. We said at the top that there are some opportunities on the Coastal Harbor Commission for those that want to step up. Um, Shellfish Commission is looking at really trying to work on two, two things that have been important. One is really looking at their ordinance about how they're going to in the future sort of manage the, the shellfish reef resource and look at licenses and how they do it and what their criteria will be both for increasing and you know if we need to to decrease to manage the resources um, and they will be working on an ordinance and probably bringing that forth later in the summer um, I, and I think those kind of at least are the things in my court okay Councilor Caterina uh, yeah we had a senior advisory meeting yesterday it was uh, very good uh, we basically reviewed what's going on in memorial park um everything's pretty much ready to go we're just waiting on with some final paving which of course obviously doesn't happen until spring um they're looking at what they want to do f as far as you know either a pavilion or tent type of um fixture down there for um the table so that there's shade um but that's moving along um, and also we talked about how we could be involved as a senior advisory group in the comprehensive plan coming up. Uh, and we also talked about the AARP um, designation, working on that. So that's moving along. Uh, Maine Municipal, we, they've canceled the meetings, so I don't have to go to Augusta, which is nice. <laughs> but <clears throat> every so often I'll get, well, what do you think about, there's not a whole lot going on in Augusta right now. They're all running for office, so they're <laughs> not doing their job. Let's just put it that way. That's all I'm going to say about that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's it for me. All right. Councillor Foley? Uh, yes, the Conservation Commission met. Um, they approved, uh, finally, the, their draft for the comprehensive plan. And then the other two things on their docket really that night we're talking about what what are the projects that are coming up this year that are going to be important to them uh, and one of them that kind of emerged uh, although it hasn't been officially picked as their project of choice though is um, 
really taking a, a more comprehensive, holistic approach to watershed management, particularly as it uh, kind of dovetails with development. So there's some concerns raised by citizens um, off, around it, a proposed subdivision off of Payne Road. And uh, mm -hmm. there's two things there. One is the watershed piece, because it's very wet back there, but also the <clears throat> potential presence of cottontail. So the Conservation Commission obviously would have an interest in those as well. So how do we make sure that you know those boards are working together and uh, with the final products and approval? So they're, mm -hmm. they're working through how they're going to tackle that. Um, Eastern Trail Alliance did not meet since we last met. And then the other committee that I'm a liaison to that, as far as I can tell, has never met is the ADA committee. And uh, something I've been thinking about, though, we have quite a few folks around town who are, in fact, disabled. And I'd love to know, you know, where we stand on that. So if there are some citizens out there who have some energy around this, I'm imploring you to give me a call. Uh, I would love to kind of take a look at our town and, and see where we are with that. Um, we have the committee for a reason, and let's do something with it. So that's it for me. Thank you, Council uh, Rowan. I have nothing this evening. Thank you. Okay. Um, I, if I could just piggyback a little bit on Councillor uh, Foley's comments. I know in appointments and, and committees we're going to be um, asking each one of the, the committees to kind of fill out a, not necessarily like an, a report of what they're, they're, they've done for the year and what their goals are. And then um, so that might be a good one for the ADA as well to kind of spur that on and see if we could get some, um, get some action or get some action items for them to look at. Um, so I also have nothing. <laughs> uh, energy uh, is meeting on Friday. Long range planning is um, mm. also scheduled. Uh, I think they've heard back from the consultant. Um, we're going to get an update on um, for the so, comprehensive plan. And um, uh, transportation uh, has not met since the last meeting either. So um, I did get an email from GP Cog asking if I was still the liaison. Because I don't know if I may have missed, uh, I may have missed a uh, a meeting or two, but I don't know if we transfer. I think I we transferred. I told them eight times. So. Okay, okay. So that's that's taken care of. Good. Okay. Yeah, you're rolled. Okay. Uh, town manager's report. Sure. I'd love to provide an update. Uh, the revaluation has been put off uh, to uh, next week, but I, I did want to report, and actually, this will allow another seven days or so of opportunity for uh, input. Um, just a quick rundown of the sort of efforts I've undertaken since you met last. Um, I was able to talk with Mike Kelly, and there was a lead article that at least introduced the matter to the committee, I think, that Friday. Um, beyond that, I had the fortuitous opportunity uh, meeting uh, with the SEDCO board in a workshop format the following Wednesday. Wow. Raised it to them. It wasn't a large audience, but they, they have kind of tentacles in the community and encouraged them to kind of <coughs> broadcast it. Uh, the following day, I addressed the Scarborough Chamber and included uh, a slide on this very matter and had probably 35 people in, in attendance. And also during that week, Karen Martin at SEDCO was kind enough uh, to uh, have me gain access to her active uh, email list, which is, uh, these are 1,400 really good active businesses, uh, good addresses we know. And we sent out a, an FAQ, a, a frequently asked question document. Uh, to try to spur interest, and we did have one inquiry. Uh, Steve Berg, who runs Alpha Management, uh, this mm -hmm. is the complex over in Oak Hill here, uh, kind of acknowledged uh, essentially the need. Mm -hmm. uh, <coughs> uh, had a question around, um, you know, what if, uh, the tax rate. Uh, Larissa was kind enough to spend some time with him. They had a good positive conversation, um, but that's the only comment I've received. So if uh, if you are receiving it, I'd love to hear about it too. And certainly share it with your colleagues. Um, this extra week will give a chance for the business community to <coughs> speak further if they wish. Could, what was the extra week? I'm sorry, I might have missed that. Uh, the matter has been tabled to a special meeting on March 1st. When yeah. we're meeting with the school board? Yes, meeting. correct. Okay, okay, great. Try Got to it. Do it that evening. Yeah. Great, thank okay. you. Uh, beyond that, uh, the public safety building is really heating up uh, this week, actually today. Uh, the full team was introduced to the building committee. Um, I was not at that meeting, but I heard from staff that, that all went well. Um, I couldn't be more pleased with the fact that we've brought on a um, owner's representative early. This is someone that's representing our interest. He's really taking lead, and he'll be running the, uh, the building meetings. Um, everything needs to flow through him, and uh, the more I meet with him, the more impressed I am and pleased that we have him on early. Is that Tom Perkins? Tom Perkins. Um, he came highly recommended. Uh, we went through a 
our fee process, uh, and he emerged out of that process and very pleased. Uh, Councilor Hayes already reported on the bond sale and uh, the fact that our ratings were affirmed. Um, and I thank members of council who were involved in that process. Uh, I also did issue a directive to my staff for budget. My expectation is that they deliver uh, a net budget, and that is really meaningless for most of them because they, most of them don't have significant revenue sources uh, uh, at a 2% target. And I think we really need to be starting the conversation there uh, for us to meet the overall target. Uh, two last things. I, I also distributed to my staff your goals, and I've asked Tody to share them out with committee chairs. Uh, though it didn't make your list, there was conversation in that larger conversation around relying on our committees more. And so yeah. to the extent it's great, I think they should know what your goals are, and I suspect there's a number of initiatives that they're already working on that will help meet some of maybe not all. Uh, so expect to have some feedback uh, from staff and from committee chairs as well. And lastly, uh, the comp plan is going to be heating back up again. Uh, we're within a month or so of starting to see some of the initial uh, drafts, if you will. One of the pieces that has been kind of underappreciated or not really talked about is part of this process is going to provide the town with a return on investment tool. This is a fairly complex computer model with about 100 different inputs. And the intent of that is to make very informed decisions around land use. It will consider such factors as, you know, if you zone it commercial, what sort of tax value could you expect? But it even goes further, it models impacts depending on use. And so uh, I think it's going to be a really helpful tool in long-range planning, I expect, and the planning department will use it. Uh, Scarborough Downs, I think, has great interest in using that tool, and um, I don't see any reason why we don't uh, share them, because I think we'd equally like to know the answers to those questions. Mm -hmm. um, I think one of the things that resonated to me in their presentation to you is kind of the win-win. The ROI has to make sense for both parties. And I think through thoughtful uh, land use planning, we can get there and some flexibility in the future. So that's a piece that's exciting. We can't wait to get our hands on it and start to understand it. So thank you. All right, so we're, we're obviously a little bit out of order uh, or in the order of our uh, agenda. So um, we could do com counselor comments now um, and, and get that out of the way. Or uh, if, if it's the will of the council, we can save that until after public hearing. It's entirely up to you. So if, if without any objection, I will proceed to Councillor comments, and we'll start with Councillor Rowan. Yeah, thank you. Um, so my, my apologies for being late. We were uh, skiing, and uh, my kids wanted to do one more run. So. <laughs> There's always <laughs> room for one more run. That's right. That's right. So my apologies. I didn't realize we, had, we were going to have a quorum issue at that point. And it turns out we didn't. So. Uh, uh, so thank you. Um, the only thing I really want to bring up is there's been a lot of um, – uh, a lot of attention uh, recently about um, some concern with the um, uh, a lot of emotion around concern with um, changing school start times, changing uh, the way that um, grading is, is being done. And I just wanted to point out that <coughs> the uh, uh, everyone's intentions are really good here. I mean, the, there are some some terrific people that really care about their children, both in the administration and on the school board. And I just wanted to keep have everyone keep in mind that these are human beings. Uh, we're all neighbors. Um, let's try and keep um, the the discourse um, positive and with that in mind. So that's really my only comment. Thanks. Okay. Councilor Fuller? It's warmer here than it was in California. <laughs> <laughs> Just share that. But for also, today. It's for today. I arrived an hour ago, and I'm less like, whoa. <laughs> that's uh, well, yes. So, no, uh, no comments. I, I well, I, I will just add. You know, even though I was away last week at a conference, I was getting uh, quite a few phone calls and tidbits around <laughs> some of the uh, pieces that are happening, and and I, I couldn't agree with uh, Council Rowan more. Uh, nobody does these jobs because uh, they don't care about kids and they don't and they want to hurt other people or their neighbors so let's keep that in mind as we have you know we can have debate and we can have discussion um, but let's have it respectfully uh, and model for our students because particularly when I see uh, pieces on social media from adults well we can't expect more for our kids when we don't expect more from ourselves so uh, keep that in mind yeah, and if I could just mention, I know we, we all received a, uh, an email from uh, Chairman Donovan 
uh, reminding us, and just to remind the public as well, that the separation of, of powers between the school board and the council, right. um, we really are obligated um, legally to not get involved in those discussions. So I, I appreciate the, 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 the um, willing to share uh, people's opinions, and uh, I certainly have received a lot of calls as well. Um, but for the public to please just keep in mind that we uh, we are not uh, allowed to engage in those kinds of discussions with, directly with the school board. So um, I appreciate um, I appreciate the councilors kind of sticking to that. I know it's 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 difficult, um, but I think it's obviously in in everybody's best interest to to keep that in mind and just to remind the public of that as well. So, uh, Councilor Katarina, I really don't have anything. New to add to that, other than again, you know, just remind people to, you know, we all live together, we're all neighbors, and you know, you you can agree to disagree. I don't have a problem with that, but just how you do it. So, <clears throat> Councilor Hayes. Yeah, and I guess I'd you know kind of echo what's already been said. The <clears throat> the only other piece that I add, and you know, that I want to add, and it's been sort of a constant conversation anyway. I think. When this is resolved, as they move through it, I think this community has some work to do to, to heal and to find, to build on the themes of already heard. How do we, as a community, handle these types of issues when we're, if, if everybody's, you know, everybody's got good intentions, but how do we, as a community, decide how we get to a resolution? So I think we are going to probably have a challenging budget season. So I think the sooner we can kind of put this behind us and heal from it and move forward. I don't know what that looks like, but but I hope all of us will roll up our sleeves and say, how do we how do we do this as a community? Because I think that's important. Um, so I'll, I'll I'll I guess I'll go last. Um, I want to thank you all for your patience. This is kind of a, an odd uh, way that we're doing things, and uh, I appreciate your <laughs> flexibility and understanding as as counselors. I know it's been. Uh, I guess so. Uh, Tody reminded me that I don't know if we've ever had an issue with a quorum. Uh, delay. We've, we've rescheduled meetings, but I don't think we've ever had a delay. So, um, again, I'll just reiterate for the for the general public, um, we were um, scheduled to go into executive session. The meeting started at six, and we have public hearings scheduled for seven p.m. So, by obligation, we can't start the public hearings before seven because they've been posted. So, uh, I believe at this point we're about twenty minutes out to 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 seven. So we'll. Uh, Sorry, Council Kennedy. I was just going to move that we recess until seven o'clock. And that was going to be the next thing. Right? <laughs> so there's the motion. A second. Okay. All in favor? And that's unanimous. We are in recess until seven p.m. Thank you.
traveling and we had um, some uh, quorum issues this morning or this evening. So we were scheduled to go into executive session at 6. Uh, we we um, tabled that until all the council will be present, and we've basically taken things um, in a little bit of a different order. So we've conducted the town business starting at 6, but uh, in light of the public hearing sections, we're obligated to start that at 7 o'clock as posted. So um, we've gone through most of the agenda al already for the business side of things. However, realizing that, that not everybody was present, um, without objection, I would be happy to open it up to public comment again. So anything that's either not on the agenda or anything from old or new business on the agenda, you're welcome to come up to the podium. Uh, three minutes, please state your name and address. And um, you're welcome. So public comment is open. Uh, okay, so we'll, uh, what I'd like to do now, and just a little background for the counselors, uh, Tom Doherty's here from uh, from Camp Ketcha, the executive director from Camp Ketcha. They did a, um, a, a really interesting solar program partnership with UNE and, and uh, Revision. And uh, we've invited Tom to come and, and uh, give us a little update on it. And uh, I thought it was a good good community effort and uh, something positive for a change to talk about. So, <laughs> please, Tom. Thanks, Chris. I appreciate it. Uh, we did uh, about a year ago, we did a so ago, we worked, we were selected by the UNE Solar Ambassadors um, to um, their students, volunteer students, who raised $35,000 in the community and nationally, basically, um, using the help of an organization called Revolve, which is a revolving solar fund. It's a nonprofit out of San Francisco. Um, they work with groups of students, give them the technical assistance to be able to raise money um, that helps a local nonprofit. So the next nonprofit after us is the Community Bicycle Center in Biddeford, and then hopefully. Um, Portland Stage Company, which obviously burns a lot of electricity. Um, and so those organizations will get solar power too. Um, we get a reduced rate on our solar electricity bill, which is a wonderful thing for us um, because we do actually use a lot of electricity with pool pumps and all the things that we do down at Camp Ketcha. Um, and then the money that we pay in helps fund future solar projects. So it's kind of a, a win-win all the way around. So it goes and helps with our long-term sustainability. It helps drive our mission of good environmental stewardship. And it helps other nonprofits like Camp Ketcha. So, and it helps fulfill, I think, uh, probably many of the people in the community realize that um, we're sort of trying to live our values every day from the way um, the effort that we put into um, combined with the Scarborough Land Trust where we did the rabbit project and set aside 20 or so acres for um, endangered New England cottontail rabbits with another local landowner. Mm -hmm. um, that rabbit has now been moved from an endangered down to a, a threatened species. So um, our goal in that thing was to try and avoid a piping plover situation for this town um, by, you know, if we had land, we were able to put that towards that project and hopefully save our neighbors and, and friends in, in the community um, having to go through that kind of hassle. Um, and, you know, it's the way we, way we deal with um, the ticks that are around, because obviously we want to have, have kids out on the property. We try to use good stewardship by using organic products, and, and uh, that allows the kids to stay going with the uh, playing outside and rolling around in the mud without worrying about coming home with some terrible disease, as, as we're all aware of in the news. So the solar project just goes to extend that, um, and we're, we're pretty excited about the way that would, uh, that's come out for us. And so that is on the thing, uh, on the barn right now, and producing electricity which is really great to see. 418 kilowatts in January, I think it was. I think that's a lot of electricity, but it seems like it to me at least. So, so. Great. If there's any questions, I'd be happy to take them. So. Any questions for Tom? Um, I, I did want to just uh, recognize the, the, the UNA students. I think their, their crowdfunding, um, yep. they, really were, they were a little disappointed. I think it only took them, it took them a, what, a month and a half, I think, yeah. or something to raise uh, raise the funds. Uh, they, they were disappointed it took them so long. I think they were, uh, uh, and I think. Useful exuberance. Yeah, yeah, that was, yeah. yeah. And what was, uh, I can't remember what the amount was that they. 35000 was they raised total. Yeah. So yeah. Um, Horizon yeah. Foundation, which is a local main foundation, kicked in 10 of that. But yeah. um, the students raised the rest of it yeah. um, strictly through crowdfunding. And that's the support that Revolve gives, is they have the crowdfunding sites, they train the students on how to do that. Um, and it's a, it's a great thing. So hopefully they'll keep going in our community and maybe add a group at USM and those kind of things. So. 
Um, and I, we've obviously reduced our carbon footprint significantly, mm -hmm. and um, so and our horses seem to like it. So they can <laughs> <laughs> yeah, great, excellent, excellent. Well, thank, thank you, Tom. Thank you. Appreciate that. the opportunity. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank you. And we certainly appreciate all the things that Cam Ketchup does for the community, without a doubt. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, anyone else wishing to address the council of public comment? No. Seeing none, we'll close public hearing. Um, we're going to move into the public hearing aspect. Uh, first one is order number 17-109, 7 p.m. public hearing on the request of the Scarborough Town Council to order the discontinuance of all portions of Avenue 2 located southerly of King Street with no damages awarded to the abutting landowners and to file said order with the town clerk. This is the second public hearing. Uh, sorry, second public hearing is scheduled for Wednesday, March 7th. And uh, Tom, I'll let you introduce that if there's anything else. Yeah, I, I'm not sure if this needs much introduction. Um, this matter has been before this council for better than two years. Um, I, I think the end product is uh, it's kind of better for that extended process, and I appreciate kind of uh, how we got here. Uh, it seems like a long road, but uh, I think it's, it's an important road nonetheless. Um, I do applaud the council in adding an extra step. There is an extra public hearing. Um, I do see representatives uh, tonight that are prepared to make presentations if that serves your need. Um, I'm not sure if that's necessary at this point, but I'll defer to the council chair and the, and the town council if you wish. Uh, beyond that, tonight is just public hearing for you to um, receive input from the public, uh, and then ultimately I'll come back to you for a final vote at your second meeting in March. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, does anybody wish to see the presentation, or are we happy moving right to public comment? All right. So um, I, I think we're happy moving right into public comment. I'll remind everybody we do have the, the rules of decorum. Please follow those. Uh, three minutes, state your name and address, and welcome. Thank you. My name is Don Hamill. I live at the 3 Bay Street. and. Uh, I have uh, an email here uh, with some questions for the council having to do with Avenue 2. So um, they're from Curtis and Patricia Deegan, 7 Avenue 2 in Scarborough and uh, 41 Jones Creek Drive. So I'd like to read those to make sure they get into the record. Um, the subject is Avenue 2 Beach Access. And sh there are seven questions uh, that they would like the council to address. Number one, the timing of the process is a concern of ours. We attended the meeting at the fire station with Councillor Donovan in the fall and expressed our displeasure with the timing of conducting this significant change during the off-season when many owners are not present. We were assured that the timing of future actions would be mindful of scheduling when more owners are likely to be present. This is obviously not the case for this to be proceeding in winter months. Question number two. Who will be responsible for the maintenance of the path in the short term and long term future? Who's responsible for any liability issues? The town, the abutters, or others? Number three, will access be extended beyond dawn to dusk? We walk down the path to watch the fireworks from Old Orchard frequently, and this is obviously after dusk. Number four, how will the elevations and topography of the new section be configured? Currently, there is a firm level path that exists from the street to the dunes. This makes it safe and easy for traveling if elderly parents with carriages and beach buggies. This should be replicated rather than just cutting a path through the brush in the soft sand that undulates significantly. Number five, who and how will the mailboxes be relocated our mailbox for 7 Avenue 2 is right in the middle of the newly planned path. Who will be required to pay for and reinstall a new mailbox? And number five, will there continue to be trash bins placed and collected at the end of Avenue 2 path, as has been the case in past years? And finally, number seven, what will the maximum building allowances and restrictions on any new buildings on the lots owned by Mr. Gendron? We are concerned about height and width restrictions blocking the current water views that exist. Uh, and I forgot to add at the beginning, this was sent via email also directly to the town council. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ham. Anybody else wishing to speak on this matter? I have not seen it. 
Mr. Hamill, I'm not sure if we've received that. Would you be kind enough to forward that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Forward that to you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sir. Good evening. My name is uh, Philip Reed. I live on uh, East Grand Avenue in Scarborough. And I've been involved in this process of uh, discussing the state of Avenue 2 for about a year. Uh, I've learned a lot about the law, a lot about the town council, and I met some people I must admit. But two things really have stood out to me. Number one, uh, and I, I'm trying to say this kindly, I really don't think a lot of the members of the town council understand the depth of feeling of, I would, I would guess, the vast majority of the people of Scarborough on the issue of giving up public access to the beach. You know, they can't come to the meetings. You know, they have their own lives. They don't live on the beach. Um, but, you know, they see this happening. And I, in my conversations, and I've had many, I haven't talked to anyone who didn't think this was a bad deal. The other thing is, um, throughout this process, one thing that has struck me is that, you know, even if, even if the majority of the council decides they want to agree to this agreement. I don't think during this whole process I saw the town really taking an aggressive uh, stance in the negotiations to get as much as we could out of it. And I, I find that bothersome. Thank you. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> I'm Sue Hamill, and I live on Bay Street in Pine Point. I participated with the Pine Point Association in developing this agreement before the council tonight. And, but I want to make it very clear that this was never, ever our first choice to vacate ownership of this valuable town asset. This is a town which approved bond issues of $2 million for the Scarborough Land Trust to ensure that the preservation of important property in this town took place. Scarborough citizens are fortunate to have so many great properties which deserve protecting, and our citizens are willing to spend money on them. It certainly raises the question, then why, why are we giving away Avenue 2, a public way to the beach? This process and discussion has been going on for over two years, and I understand many on the council say it's been far too long. But our town manager and council missed an important step at the beginning of the process when they failed to vigorously defend town ownership of Avenue 2. Plenty of legal fees have been incurred by the town on this issue, but almost no money has been spent to defend ownership of Avenue 2 or research the record. Why? Why was the town so quick and eager to hand over this land? Pine Point was laid out in the 1880s with public access points spread out to make the beach and ocean easily accessible to residents and visitors. But we've already lost some of these access points. The town gave away parts of Avenue 5 and 6 over 10 years ago. These access points are on the quiet riverside of Pine Point and could be useful today to provide space for recreational users away from the busy boat launch. The council could not foresee just 10 years ago how kayaking and paddle boards with growing popularity, and these access points could be used. One of these is right next door to Bailey's Lobster Pound and Bait Shack. Shed. We've been told that the town kept a 30-foot right of way when they gave Bailey's Avenue 6. But have you ever seen anyone use that access point? What would happen if someone pulled up and tried to paddle out, um, drop off their paddle board or whatever? Can our town management say today that giving away those water access points was the right thing to do? Would the same decision have been made today? 20, 50, 100 years from now, what will the citizens of Scarborough think about your action tonight on Alvin 2? The fact that the town actually gave away a 50 foot right of way to the beach to private owners in exchange for a 10-foot easement. Please vote tonight to keep town ownership of Avenue 2 as it has been since the 1880s. 
Thank you, Ms. Hamill. Uh, I will, I will arri remind the public we're not voting tonight. This is public hearing only, so no action will be taken on this item at this time. This is strictly public hearing. Anybody else wish to comment on this issue? Uh, I live down in Pine Point. You all know what I'm going to say. Please don't give this land away. I feel almost like I'm, I feel kind of embarrassed that I'm coming up here having to beg you guys to do this again and again. It's disheartening to think that you're just going to give it away. Um, it's, it's also disheartening to see that it's kind of like the same people that gripe about it, but I know there are more people that are interested and, and, and want to keep this land. They just don't come to the meetings. Um, but I have two questions. Is going forward, can we not give any, give any more land away, please? Let's try to nip this in the bud. I feel like it's, it's going to be done. But I know there's more land down in Pine Point that um, people are going to try to scoop up because they're in a butter. And I hope we can stop that from happening before it does. And the second thing I want to say is maybe um, in these beach communities, Higgins, Pine Point, where most of the residents are there in the summer, maybe we should do this kind of uh, activity in the summer and in the fall when the residents that live there um, and are really the most affected by it can actually have an input. It seems kind of underhanded to have these meetings and decisions during the off months when no one's there. Well, when a lot of people aren't there. And secondly, I think it's really disheartening also when council members um, are fed up because it's been a two-year process and they almost don't even want to go through the, the, the incredible hardship of having another boring meeting about this. And haven't we beat this dead horse enough? Well, as I said before, too bad. That's your job. We're supposed to have the opportunity to voice our opinions and if you get tired of it, get off the committee. I mean, I don't know what else to say, but you owe the public the, uh, the ability to share their opinions. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Everton. Anybody else wishing to speak on this matter? Please approach the podium. <clears throat> Hi, Sue Foley Ferguson, <clears throat> 331 Black Point Road. So what we found out last time is that our town's attorney is not denying that it's the citizens that have a 200-year-old right-of-way to 50 feet of property and natural landscape. Um, our attorney said that, the town's attorney. And we're going to give away 40 feet of it for 10 feet. This is 10 feet compared to go to the end of that. We're going to give that away. <clears throat> what else have we decided? There's a ton of documentation out there to fight this in court, but the council's not willing to listen to the citizens to fight it because it's going to cost too much money. But yet we did, we did fight the assessments, right? We did. What, uh, what kind of documentation? Here's, here's the letter I told you about the corner lot. I'm not just blowing smoke. Everything I say is factual. I've been working on conservation issues in this town for 26 years <clears throat> since 1992. I worked through three different land bond referendums to raise, to, to protect public access for the community because 75 percent of the citizens want to protect it. There's something happening in this town. On Monday you'll see the school department, over hundreds of people will come here and say the school board's not listening. <laughs> to the teachers and the, and the parents. That's happening. But guess what? It's ha also happening here at the council. I'm telling you, it's bad. And it's sad. And I've been asked as the chair of the Parks and Conservation Land Board to comment on your goals. And the town council said one of them is building trust. And I can tell you right now, I don't even have to go to my committee. I'm heartbroken. I spend hours and hours and hours of my volunteer time protecting public access. Hours. As do other people. And the town council isn't willing to defend that public access. Even when our attorney said an easement could go like this. Whereas a 200-year road, I would hang my hat in the court of law 
on a 200-year-old right-of-way court of law with all the documentation that there is, which there's a ton of. I'll pass this out. I would hang my hat on that rather than an easement. And you guys really should too. And I guess my, I'll end with this, at questions through the chair. What other alternatives did you guys consider besides five feet and 10 feet? Did you ever ask for 25 feet? Did you ever ask for 30 feet? Did you, and this is seriously, I'm asking this question. I'd like the manager eventually, maybe before you guys, to answer the questions. Did you look at the contract zone? Um, did you, what other alternatives uh, has the town looked at? Because giving away land is, it, it's just, it, it's a waste of people's time to protect it. And then on the other hand, just start giving it in a way like this and I, I would I would really think twice about your legacy and what you want to leave because my legacy is that I'm trying to protect land for the future generations and what's what's going to be your legacy and I'm, not, I'm just I'm not trying to point fingers I'm just saying really think about it thank you thank you Ms. Willie, for saying, if you'd be so kind as to put the request to through an email oh. um, thank you anybody else wishing to speak on this matter Hi, everybody. Um, my name is Deirdre Paul. I am a landowner on Avenue 2, 12 Avenue 2. Um, the house that I own has been in my family for 50 years, and I've been using that path at least daily. I live there now. I love that path. It's pretty beautiful. Um, I want to voice my appreciation for all of you for everybody here and for this opportunity to speak. Um, I did go to the meeting at the fire station last, I can't remember when that was, but um, I go down that path every day. I see the green and the red markers for their proposed moving and I can see both sides of this. Some days I say, you know, this isn't really a big deal. You know, they're just gonna move it and I'm still going to walk it, and um, unlike some other people, I don't really hold a lot of past emotion about other things that the town has done down there, um, but I will say that it seems like there's a shrinking going on of public access down there without being able to name things. And I as well am super nervous about the easement. And it just feels, it just doesn't feel solid. I mean, and, and I am not legally versed in this, but you know, is the town gonna actually be deeded that land? Is the town gonna own those 10 feet, first of all? Um, what would happen in the eventuality that either Gendron or the people on the other side sold and decided, I mean, is, is there gonna be provisions for the future in that regard? Um, other concerns I hold as well about my mailbox, um, what it's gonna look like, who's gonna maintain it? I think that's a really great question. I also read in the leader that it's gonna be policed I mean, is that is the town going to pay for that? I mean, is that a real thing? Um, the dust to dawn thing again. The fact that the abutters on the left side wanted to put up a fence and signs, I found that incredibly offensive. You know, if if originally when I went to the other meeting, it was said that the abutters on the left didn't have any interest at all, and now they want to put up a fence and a sign, and again. I might be going off a bit here because I think that I'm hoping to hear from you what the provision is as far as you know what what the abutters are allowed to to do there but the fact is is that now when you walk down there it's just naturally beautiful you know it's it's really beautiful and I understand that things change and I think that Gendron should build the house that he wants but it does feel rather like in this instance, the town should vo should stand by what it's 
what does the town stand for? What, what are the principles? Because there is a lot at stake here. And, you know, what's the bellwether? What's the, what's the intention? What's, what does Scarborough stand for? And I think that should be moving forward, not Paul, fear of a lawsuit. I'm sorry. Can you, can you please wrap your comments up? We're, we're oh, okay, sure. a little bit over. But yes, I'm sorry about that. Thank you. Um, I would also uh, kind of really appreciate clarification of the Paper Street thing, whether or not towns were requested to claim them or discontinue them or whatever. Like, if, if that land truly does belong to Scarborough, I agree, and I think that we should we should keep it. And figure out a different solution. I just I just feel like if, if this is going to go forward, that I would really just like some really rock solid um, assurances that that path is always going to be there. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else wishing to speak on this matter? Please step up to the podium. Seeing none, we'll close public hearing. May I just use the opportunity? Uh, we've had a number of uh, fairly new speakers to the issue, and a lot of time has passed. Would it be of value at either the next public hearing or before you take final action to maybe kind of uh, cover the territory again to have a more formal presentation, a refresher as to kind of what the state of the proposal is? And I've been taking notes of these uh, questions and be prepared to answer those um, next time you convene. So would that be a value, do you think? And I say that with the consultants in attendance here. Um, we can arrange that if, if that would be helpful. I think that would be a tremendous value. All right, I can be in touch in terms of scheduling. Okay. Thank you. Okay, uh, order number 18-001, 7 p.m. public hearing on the proposed amendments to the Higgins Beach character-based zoning districts. Uh, this was um, addressed by Long Range Planning, and I think you, in the Councilor Packets, you have information from the uh, Planning Board minutes as well. So, uh, anybody wishing to speak on this matter, please uh, step up to the podium and name and address and three minutes, please. Hello, I'm Allison Bristol. I'm at 6 Bayview Avenue at Higgins Beach. And um, I was not able to attend the January uh, town council meeting when you, I believe, made the vote on the first read. And before I make my comments, I really want to acknowledge and thank Jay Chase for the conversation that we had last fall about this, his suggestion that I go to the Long Range Planning Board meeting in December. And um, also, I know he made mention of the memo that I sent to town council uh, prior to the January meeting, which I'm assuming everybody received. So I wanted to come here tonight before the second vote to once again reiterate my concerns about the impact of coastal mixed use zoning as it's been defined in the Higgins Beach Character Code. And first, I'd like to reiterate that I have absolutely no concern at all about preserving predictability with the small businesses at Higgins Beach as they exist today. They are very much part of the character of the beach. And as I have said many times, I'm very blessed and nothing could be better than to live next door to the breakers. Prior to 2015, three of the four businesses that are make up the coastal mixed use zoning were zoned as R4 with commercial use. And the Higgins Beach market was zoned as RF. So the problem, in my mind, that's now been created is that with the mixed use zoning, that, it, uh, that the existing uses of these four Higgins Beach properties have been, in, in essence, been made interchangeable. Therefore, they're not only, we're not only preserving the businesses that are there, but we're expanding on the permitted uses for what could be developed in any of these four lots. So with this, together with all the Higgins Beach properties now being made conforming lots, this has created an unpredictability <coughs> for residential abutters, of which I am one. Uh, with the proposed Ave Ocean Avenue Gateway Map Amendment, the hope was that the Higgins Beach market would no longer be zoned as Higgins Beach, which would take retail sales and services out of the coastal mixed-use permitted uses. 
And there was some discussion about this in the long range planning meeting in December, but it was ultimately determined that keeping the market in Higgins Beach was consistent with the town's comprehens comprehensive plan and would, would not be spot zoning per se. So just based on attending that meeting and those comments, I actually uh, went through the comprehensive plan and I found quite a bit of language that really uh, supported um, the impact on re uh, residential, uh, not just to Butters, but in the neighborhood. And particularly a call to action in chapter five of the comprehensive plan that quote, revise the non, to, re, to quote, revise the non-conforming provisions of land use regulations and zoning map if necessary to make existing small non-conforming local businesses that provide desirable neighborhood or community services conforming. This will allow them, the existing <coughs> businesses, to modernize and expand, and I, I quote, provided they do not unduly impact adjacent residential areas. And there's other language in the comprehensive plan that addresses that. And I, I'll just close in saying that I'm uh, really appreciative and grateful to Chairman Donovan, who in 2015, when I raised my concerns, he uh, responded by having, having some language added into the ordinance requires, requiring site plan review for any change of use. And this is something, but it's not to say that down the road when all the players here have probably changed and a developer comes in and wants to put a neighborhood store or a shop house on the corner of Bayview and Houghton and meets all the site plan review requirements, the neighbors will not be able to do much about it. Generally, people say this will never happen. If that's the case, then I respectfully question why the town would zone Higgins Beach so it could. And as I mentioned earlier, I'll be retiring to Scarborough, with the, Scarborough within the month, and I look forward <coughs> to many wonderful years here, and I can only hope my concerns won't be something I have to contend with down the road. So I thank you all for your time and your consideration, and truly your dedicated service to the community. I appreciate it. Thank you, Ms. Bristol. Welcome to Scarborough. Thank you. <laughs> Anybody else wishing to speak on this matter? Seeing none, we'll close the public hearing. Uh, next item is order number 18-002, 7 p.m. public hearing on the proposed amendments to the Town of Scarborough zoning map. Again, this was another issue that was presented for the <coughs> planning, uh, and there uh, in your counselor packet is also the notes from uh, Tuesday's planning board meeting. Anybody wishing to speak on this matter? Seeing none, we'll close the public hearing. Next order, uh, order number 18-003, 7 p.m. public hearing on the proposed amendments to Chapter 405, Town of Scarborough Zoning Ordinance, Section 7C, Residential Density and Affordable Housing, Provisions, Subsection B, Affordable Housing in lieu fee. And this was presented from the Housing Alliance. Uh, Tom, did you want to make any Just statement? Or, or? Or for introduction? Oh, sure. The, so the concept here was uh, we want to change the ordinance as written to include, uh, it, it prohibits um, some uses that could be made use of for the uh, in Luffy um, uh, fund that we have for, in, for affordable housing reserve. Um, <coughs> and it adds in, um, prohibiting uh, the use of those uh, that fund balance um, for meeting obligations in inclusionary zones. Um, the only inclusionary zone right now is Crossroads, um, and uh, so the idea would be that they're going to have to meet their obligation without tapping into this reserve fund. Thank you for that, Councillor Rowan. Uh, anybody from the public wishing to comment on this? Please approach the podium. Seeing none, close the public hearing. So three, uh, next order is order number 18-013, 7 p.m. public hearing in action on the request to extend the six-month moratorium on retail marijuana establishments and retail marijuana social clubs for another six months from March 19, 2018 to September 15, <coughs> 2018. And this was originally from uh, on the September 20th uh, agenda, I believe, is that right? Uh, so, tell me, if you yes. want to uh, the 
the thought process and strategy when the moratorium was first imposed by this council was to allow the state legislature to work through its rulemaking, um, and so we had a better sense of what protections, if any, uh, may be coming from the state to better inform what additional work, uh, if any, we'd have to do locally. Um, I don't know the exact status of that uh, process, but it's certainly not complete. There, I believe, is still a select committee that's working on the issue. Uh, working with the governor's office, I believe, to try to garner some support, but we're still no clearer um, in terms of what that timeline is. State law does allow uh, municipalities to impose a moratorium for up to six months and to renew it for another six months, and so this action would do just that and essentially uh, buy us another six months to get a better sense of where things are going. Um, you could certainly take action at any time during that period if you wished, but this is kind of just hits the pause button, if you will. And uh, I guess I'll say I'm hopeful that within that time frame, we should at least have a sense of what the state's uh, prepared to do. Thank you. Anybody from the public wishing to comment? Uh, Benjamin Howard, 4 Oakdale Drive. I just have a question. Um, after this second six-month moratorium, is it possible to have another six months, or is that where the line is drawn? my understanding that would be the limit, 12 months total. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Howard. Anybody else from the public wishing to speak on this issue? Seeing none, we'll close public hearing. Um, uh, we'll entertain a motion. So moved. Second. Sorry, what's the motion? We Six have to, seven. we're voting Six on the moratorium. Oh, we're, this is actual action. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Council Foley, was that a second? Yeah, it was. Okay. Um, discussion. Councilor Katarina. I, I just think it makes sense um, from what I've seen from the main municipal and what's crossing my desk that uh, they don't know what they do in Augusta yet, so we might as well put a moratorium on us for the next six months. So that's my feeling. Councilor Rowe? Yeah, my only concern is that, that I don't know that six months is going to be long enough. We're, we're, yeah. we're, I, how long has it been already? Um, so. I don't know what our other options are, but I mean, it's kind of the moratorium or nothing, I would think. And, and um, so I'm supportive of it, but just concerned it's not going to be enough. Anybody else? Well, I, I mean, I guess, uh, you know, here we're, we're again finding ourselves in a position where we're having to wait for guidance from Augusta. Um, I, I, I do think it's more prudent to have them get the rules in place first so that we know what we're dealing with and how we're legally supposed to address it. I don't think we're certainly in a position to to um, contradict the law by any stretch, but we do need some kind of guidance, so I would support the moratorium for sure. And I, I agree with you. I hope six months is enough time for them to get their act together, but they're coming out of session, I think, in another month or so, uh, yes. and then we have another election cycle, and who knows what's going to happen. So. Um, uh, hopefully we'll be able to move it forward. Council Rome. Yeah, so my only other comment was, have, have we reached out all to our congressional delegation just for either, you know, some, some kind of expectation of what we might expect for these rules to come forward or um, some kind of change to allow us to put in place another moratorium so that we don't have to take action before we understand what the framework is? Congressional or state? Uh, state. Okay. State. Legislative. You meant to say legislative. Yeah. yeah. Whoever. Yeah. Yeah. I should observe, um, certainly you can take action. Some communities have actually done bans right. uh, of all the loud uses. Uh, others, uh, South Portland is the only one that comes to mind, but I think there are a few others around the state that have uh, allowed certain uh, uses. The thing that does intrigue me is at least the initial proposal the legislative committee was working on was a, a bit of an interesting approach. It was opt-in as opposed to... So I, I think it's important for us to see uh, how they posture those state rules mm -hmm. as to what actions and what response uh, is appropriate at the local level or required at the local level. Mm -hmm. So uh, we'll monitor it closely. If there's no movement, I think uh, we will need to take this up. Uh, it'll be a matter I suspect the or ordinance committee will take up. Mm -hmm. That's a question to the yep. town manager through the yes. chair. Um, is there any risk that or that you can see of us not having some kind of uh, plan B in place in case there is no extension of that six months? So, like, I always think, you know, yes, mm -hmm. do I support the moratorium, but should we be figuring out what we think we might want to do regardless? Uh, because if at the end of that, if they 
if we can't get an extension of the moratorium, sure. and, now, and we don't have anything, now we're scrambling versus being a little bit Point, proactive. Points well taken, and I'm not sure I've talked to many of you individually, but the uh, council's never taken this up as a body or even one of your committees, so I don't have a strong sense of what the will of council is, so I think uh, that would be wise to start to have those conversations. Um, and perhaps if the ordinance committee has some time in their agenda over the spring, yeah. uh, they could start those conversations. I, and if I could add, I, I can see once the legislature is out, they've got three more weeks, three to four more weeks. Uh, I can tell you that uh, at the main municipal level, there was quite a bit of consternation or concern that we are allowed to have home rule in this, that we can make our decisions as municipalities, whether we want to allow social clubs or not, or whatever, to do with the marijuana, and that was made very clear in the legislature. But right now, uh, it's it's I don't know where it is. To be honest, I don't know if anyone knows. They kind of deep sixed it somewhere. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but yeah, I think later in the spring when we see if there's any movement, then yeah, yeah I just think it'd behoove us to at least start right. getting some ideas to get right. on paper. Yeah, maybe I, I, yeah, I think that's probably a good right. topic on ordinance to maybe even start doing some homework on what the other right. communities are doing. And I can see that in April. Yeah. 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 Okay. Any April. other discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? That's unanimous. Thank you. So that's the end of our agenda. Um, I, again, in, in lieu of kind of a, a skewed uh, a process tonight, mm -hmm. um, I'll offer the, the floor to councilors if you want to make any closing comments. And if not, then so I, will, I will entertain a motion <laughs> to adjourn. I have nothing further to say, so I'm going to move adjourn. Or, yeah, make a motion to adjourn. I'll second. second this motion. All in favor? <laughs> We are adjourned. Thank you very much. I said all seconds. We're going to take it on the road. Yeah. Yeah.